Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. You guys, I got your favorite, one of your favorites, Fortune Feebster coming on. I just wanted to thank you again for everybody that has seen my stand-up special. I have 1,148 five-star reviews. That means so much to me, and you guys are telling your friends to watch it. It's on Amazon Prime Video Direct, and please spread the word. As you know, this was a self-produced, self-financed stand-up special, and as a female a comedian, it is hard to get these specials, and this is how I was able to do it, and I want people to see it, and the way they're going to see it is through you guys telling people, so I really appreciate that. I've got some exciting news coming next week about tours, so hold on tight. But I am, things are happening, people. You're going to get to see me soon. And also, Patreon, you guys, this weekend I have a jamming Patreon. I have an episode on every level. You know, Friday is every all the juiciest, latest stuff. You're going to hear about what I'm really thinking about. But then I also got Juicy Crimes with my sister Shannon doing a juicy history crime with her. And then I'm going to have something special for the top tier. So you go to heathermcdonald.net, patreon.com slash juicy scoop. And now for our girl, Fortune, and lots of juicy topics. Hello and welcome to socially distanced juicy scoop in studio with my girl, Fortune Feemster. Thank you. You have not driven to Calabasas no. in months. Heather, I have not seen you in so long. Hold on. Let me say it. I'm going to turn my head while I say it so I don't spit on you. Juicy scoop. I have not been here in a long time. I've been hunkered down. No, you haven't. And so I have seen people in person. We do keep a distance, but we even made it a larger dif- distance I'm to hugging, make sure. I'm hugging the wall. She's hugging the wall, you guys. <laughs> um, but anything is worth it to have you in. And we have so many juicy topics to talk about. I feel like a normal human right now. This is so trippy. Well, I, you know, you, I'm not going to make fun of you because I don't COVID shame mm-hmm. anybody. Whether you're super freaked out and have never left your house and it only Instacarted, I, you can do that. Yeah. If you're going on trips but wearing a mask, not being an asshole about it, I'm for it. Yeah. You know, it's whatever. Just follow the rules, mm-hmm. but you can be as liberal as not. It's the same way I feel about breastfeeding. You want to bottle feed on your kid? Fine. You want to have that kid on your tit till you're seven? Fine. Fine. It's okay. It's what works for you as long as you follow the rules. There you go. You do you. There you go. You do you, boo. Yeah. And um, well, you're worth coming out of the bunker for. Thank you. Mm-hmm. You look adorable. I have your doll. She's featured <laughs> right here. My doll is so freaky. <laughs> well, Chris Fredrilla found it. She's a classic. That she's yeah. stunning though. Honestly, the resemblance is uncanny. It's uncanny. <laughs> and I, her shoe was untied. I was trying to tie it. And I, but it is funny that my doll is like three times the size well, of normal dolls. It's not a Barbie. <laughs> True. But neither are you. <laughs> I mean, you are a unique person. I do not have that that Barbie curve. And this is like a little like my vagina. Child my vagina the- is similar to Barbie's. <laughs> Hard to find the slit. <laughs> oh my god! Fortune, come and get hot. <laughs> I haven't gotten to make jokes in so long. Sorry for all you moms it's okay. out there. The moms love it. Their kids sing the song. They sing the theme song. They don't give a shit, these moms. I love it. They're just trying to survive, I, okay? You know how I feel about your juicy scoopers. I have some great topics for you today. Oh, I can't wait. Chris Evans, yep. Captain America. Mm-hmm. You know the story of his dick pic leak. Yeah. Which he did himself. It's a little confusing. I, I am confused. He was, okay. So he was on a thing flipping through his phone? I guess he was doing an Insta story. Mm-hmm. Was someone filming the Insta story? And then somehow, like the block, you know, when you look at your photos and you see like a block of 12 photos on your phone. Yeah. Someone caught that moment in his <laughs> Insta story. Of course. Screen grabbed that. And one of those 12 blocks was his dick. That is insane what people can do. And according to gay men everywhere, it's spectacular. Really? They were happy with it. They were they like, could, they were could not s- disappointed. They could see it that clearly? Yeah, I saw it. 
Oh, you didn't did? Didn't we see it? I didn't see it. I feel it. like we saw it. It's a pretty good size. I mean, it's uh, good lighting. It's where it's supposed to be. But he's no stranger to it because then there was another one of him doing the kitchen, the, not the kitchen, the bathroom, standing up full body dick out. Oh, interesting. So I, I just want to know, who's he sending to? Who cares that he took it? Well, who was the original receiver of that dick pic? I would assume that you have a standard dick pic. Pick. Like, do all guys take like a headshot? Yeah, like a headshot. Yeah. Literally, <laughs> literally a headshot. <laughs> like when people ask me, like, what artwork do you want to use? I'm like, just use the headshot from just the juice. Yeah, yeah. And you send it to whoever yeah. is the flavor of the month. Right. Yeah. We whatever. You just took it one day when it was just like looking really good. It was really large, and you just keep it like you put a heart on it. It's in your favorites. It's easy to find. I love that it's a headshot. I I remember I did a story once of this like a serial dater guy. Um, he had red hair. He was named Ginger with no soul, and these girls wrote me about it. Uh -huh. And when they all got together and realized they were dating the same guy, he was like a thirty year old guy. They all got. He did his in black and white, maybe because he was a redhead. Okay, but. <laughs> They all got the same, like, absolutely the same dick pic. That's when okay. I realized that people, yeah, why wouldn't you save yeah. a great shot? Well, I'm it, sure girls do, too, that do that. Yeah. But you find a nice angle for your boobies. Yeah. Keep that. Make it your, you know, stock photo. Right. Or, like, the, you put on your bikini and you haven't had anything to eat by the pool that day on vacation, mm -hmm. and you're like, get this photo now because my stomach looks flat. Like, yeah. you're not going to wait till 3.30 to get that bikini photo, you're going to take it at, a, at 10.42. True. Now, yeah. is it common for guys to take the, the wiener shots? I mean, you're asking the wrong person since I've been married forever. And That's we, true. we and did not know each other during the dick pic phase. And, and I'm not lesbian. asking now. <laughs> and you're a lesbian. But so I've heard dick pics are where it's been very popular for the last decade. Okay. And, um, yeah, back in my Groundlings days, uh, some of the single girls would show me the oh. dick pics they had been receiving. And then you had to act like, you were you uh, not out then? You're like, ooh, <laughs> give me some. Can you imagine if you had to pretend? No, I was I oh, was no. out, thank God. I was, mo mo mainly I was like, oh, okay, ah. Oh. They're, not, they're not flattering. I get some dick pics on Facebook message from my you know, from my like my professional page, yeah, and um, so the, yeah, I get I get dick pics. I get people being like, "Hi," I get um, foreign men that just see that I'm a woman of a certain age, and they just assume I'm lonely, and I like <laughs> have them come on over. <laughs> so oh, man. many, but I've. I mean, maybe women don't like admit to it, but most women laugh like when they're showing. Like my friend would be like, oh, "Hilarious! Look at this." No one's like, look at, you know, no woman that I know is right. like, look at this big old juicy scoop. <laughs> yeah, juicy scoop dick. <laughs> well, this happened to my friend, and I'm not going to say the school because I don't know that I'm allowed to share okay. it. She had a Zoom back to school night for her high school in a very prestigious city in the Los Angeles, Southern California okay. area, and they were bombed by us people having sex behind them. Those are all the parents trying to listen to the boringest. Like I didn't, I skipped back to school Zoom night. I just said fuck it. And the, but that's I would have been bummed if they, that if I missed that. I know you would have been like finally a good Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> were they trying to cover their face? So they were like purposefully. These bombed. people are, yeah. There's been a lot of sex bombing. I heard it happened in a kindergarten class. It's like something that like they're finding when people are having these big meetings, <laughs> and then, and so then she sent me the letter from the school district. Yeah. That was just you know we are horrified, and the blank police department will not stop <laughs> until these perpetrators are found. I'm like. It's okay. Like, maybe you spend more time, please. I yeah. think there's probably bigger things to do in this time than find these, these two Zoom weirdos. Bombers. And who knows that they're even in the Palestines? Oh, sorry. Take that out. <laughs> <laughs> who even knows that they're in that city? Like, right. who cares, right? They could be in Russia or something. I would love it. I would love for that to pop up on my Zoom. Oh, I know. Just to just to change just it up. Just to shake it up. You like, know? God. The same Zooms every day. Speaking of which, and you can tell the truth or you can lie, okay. but I'd rather prefer the truth. Okay, you'll never know. Did you give a shit about the Emmys and did you watch? I did watch because what else am I going <laughs> to do right now? 
Honestly. It was a Zoom Emmys. It was a Zoom Emmys. <laughs> I uh, well, I read the feedback on it and people thought it was great. They loved it. Like the 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 12 people that watched <laughs> yeah. loved it. I didn't hear it were the ratings bad. Yeah, Jimmy Kimmel was funny. He made a joke and he said that they broke a record with the lowest ratings ever. It was 6 million. Still that's a lot of people. Yeah. But I guess in the past, I would be so bummed. If I finally got to a place in my career, because you guys are probably shocked, I've never been nominated for an Emmy. Have Me you? Neither. You were trying to get people to nominate. You. I was like, "Why not go for it?" Yeah, for Didn't your special. <laughs> um, but fortune, aren't you happy that you? That wasn't my first. Yes, like, I, w- I would have been bummed. How fucking! I would have been so bummed if it finally happened. And, and you're no sitting parties, on your no couch. gowns, and no. Oh, I know you would have. I mean, it would have been cool to be nominated regardless, but if that had been my only experience, you're, like, sitting in your, like, what am I going to put a tuxedo on and sit in my, on my couch? I know. It's and, like, then lo- and then lose. I know. It's like the prom, you know, like, that you felt bad for all the kids that missed the prom. Yeah. You know, like. I mean, I did think that, like, not having to wait forever for people to get out of their seat, high five, right. kiss. Walk on stage, you know, that takes, yeah. I, I felt like it didn't move faster. Were there even any jokes or anything? They tried. Why it's hard. It's cares? hard. I mean, he did a couple bits with some of his f- famous friends. So now he's back. He left Jimmy Kimmel. He left yeah. for a minute because they found out years ago he did a sketch with blackface. So uh-huh. he just said, okay, I'm just going to take the summer off. That, and I think he was prepping for the Emmys, too. He said it's a lot of work. Oh. I've never hosted the Emmys, anyway, so I don't he know. Just, he came back. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it was a double, a double uh, reason for taking a step aside. Well, hopefully that'll be the the first and last time we ever have to do that. Oh, crap. I know, I know. I mean, it was. It, it, I watched it thinking I I would that it would make me feel better. I don't that know. you weren't nominated. No, just oh, because uh, I mean, I think anyone that wasn't nominated that'll make you feel better. <laughs> like it's just like you want something. It's just like if you weren't invited to a. A party, and it was an outdoor party, and that day you wake up and it's gloomy and it rains. And you You're like, out the party uh, was a dud. Yeah, or it like yeah. rains out, you know, on an outdoor yeah. garden party that you weren't invited to. You're like, good, I'm glad it rained. Well, I watch all the award shows because I, you know, I was an entertainment journalist for seven years before oh, I was a heard. Uh, Just kidding. So it's always I used to cover the events myself. I used to be in the press room, so I always watch them. Yeah, and I thought watching it would like lift my spirits just in general like oh something different it kind of bummed me out because i was like oh everything's weird i can't and i can't stand the shows with the zoom audience everyone like "Ah," (laughs) like i just i can't can't." it just has to end just please dear god okay so what about now this is sad and juicy okay this is vanessa bryant obviously Mm -hmm. widow to kobe bryant Mm -hmm. you know um talk about she truly has had the worst year ever yeah and her mother I mean, that's, first her, one, that's her mom. That's her mom. Okay. First, when I read about it, I was like, Vanessa Bryant kicks out her mom out of the house that she's been living in. I was like, wait, Kobe's mom or right. no, her own mom? Like a like in a separate house. So I guess what happened is throughout all these years, this mom has been living in a house that I guess the Bryants owned. Okay, and they set her up and everything really nice. Okay, and then. At a certain point, I guess she said, I'm going to move you to an apartment. Okay. So it, it's – this is the way I understand it. So, it, no, she did move her. It is not the house that she was living okay. when Kobe was alive. And she moved and furnished it and everything. Yeah. And the mom was so mad that, according to Vanessa, she did an interview with Univision and she took off all of her jewelry and she made the place look like shit and she moved the nice furniture out. Oh, to and she's like, make it. now I'm living in this sad apartment. Vanessa kicked me out of my house and took my car. Oh, no. And Vanessa was like, you know what? Fuck you. You haven't even seen the kids really? this whole time claiming, maybe she's claiming COVID, but maybe she's not a great grandma. There are a lot of grandmas that aren't really that into being grandmas. Uh, yeah. Believe it or not. They're like, I raised my kids. I'm not really. <laughs> I have, don't even like being called grandma. No, yeah. I've had friends <laughs> like, that will be <laughs> like, yeah, my mom never comes around, whatever. And I go, well, you know, she only agreed to be a mother. The fact that you went on to have four kids, she if she's not into it, that. she's not into it. But obviously, this is horrible to expose it publicly. And they, I mean, mother, daughter, whatever, you can have your rift. You can be a grandma that's not into it. 
Well, but I don't know it's pretty she's... shitty for her to to do an interview. I, I mean, think. that's the thing. If someone's if someone's paying any rent for you, I mean, even if it may not be the big house you were sorry living that in. you yeah sorry that you went from a two million dollar house to a one million dollar condo. I mean, I don't know, yo, but yo. I'm assuming it was just a decent. smaller thing. Yeah, yeah. it had to be decent. To then, I mean, what did she think her reaction would be like? Oh, let me rectify this. No, I, anybody would be like, well, you don't like what I'm giving you? Okay, bye. Like, But it's like, it's so true. It's like anybody, and this is such a common thing, someone that like puts someone on their, you know, fake payroll or whatever, yeah. or gives them money every month that's a relative. It's like, it's never enough. I know. It's ne- once they give a taste of it, they're like, oh, saw that you went to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> You, oh, really? Whoa, must be nice. You yeah, I'd love seats. to take a well, vacation. Well, well, Mom, but I, that's why I put you on the beach in uh, Newport so that you could walk down to the beach. Well, it was cold today. Yeah. Must be warmer in um, Mexico where you were. <laughs> like I, mean, I still have scars from when I gave birth to you. <laughs> Wait, let's, let's do a little improv. Who am I? You're going to be bad. Any bad grandma that I've been, that, and I'm just a rich person that's put you on the payroll okay. for the last, you know. Sure, sure, sure. Five years. Oh, hey, hey Mom. I was just running out. Um, Hi, honey. You know, Jenny's got her dance recital. Mm. Were you going to come? Oh, uh, when is it? It's today. I told you four times she's been working on it for eight months. Ooh, that's going to be hard. Oh. I have an eye appointment. Oh. Uh, you know I have that thing with my eye. Oh, no, it's, but. It's blurry. Oh, okay. I couldn't even, if even if I went, couldn't see it. Oh. Okay, Mom. Well, I just, you know, anyway, I thought you would want to see your grandkids dance. Oh, but... I love them. They know that, right? Uh, well, I, I tell them, yeah. Okay. Oh, well, perfect. That's great. So anyway, Mom, I, I talked to the pool guy, mm-hmm. and he said that um, he can just replace those few tiles on the pool. Oh. So he'll be doing that. They I, don't, you don't have to replaster and redo the whole pool. So I'm Oh, I wanted to... it bigger. It's very small. I know, Mom, but we're not going to do that. Like we're, it's, uh, it's a you few tiles. put me in this tiny apartment. This pool's tiny. Wait, if it was an apartment, you wouldn't have a pool. <laughs> You're still in a house. <laughs> this house... This house, I know it's a big house. I would like the pool to match the size of the house. The pool, small. You know I like a, I like a lot of space and a lot of water around me. I know, Mom, but, but come on. Like, this is getting ridiculous. You know, ever since I met J- Mary Jerry, we've been paying for you. It's up to $15,000 a month in expenses. Like, mm-hmm. come on. I mean, I know we do well, but come on, Mom. Well, I just, oh, being a, oh, I can't even say it. Grandmother <laughs> is just it's well it's worn me out to be honest. After all those years I spent as your mother, I mean I know I'm still your mother, but now my grandmother. It just feels like I'm being sucked dry, and that's why I need water <laughs> and a pool and a bigger pool and a bigger bigger pool. Yeah, so I vote for Vanessa on this one. Well, also. Uh, when you start your year 2020 like she did, she has no fucks to give. Yeah. She's no. just like, she, I mean, the worst has happened to her. So what, you know what I mean? So yeah. she's going to be like, no, exactly. not putting up with this. Exactly. I agree. And and especially she's, and I love that she's like, I'm going to combat this. Like she hasn't seen the kids. not a good grandma. Now, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, you say you are aware of I, what's I watch, happening. I watch every episode. Teddy Mellencamp, daughter of John Cougar Mellencamp, Mm -hmm. Uh, she did three seasons. There was rumors in the last week that she would not be returning. And yesterday she confirmed it and she went on her Instagram and I loved what she said. I did too, actually. She looked beautiful. She was with her baby and she's just like... I, she goes, I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to say if we parted ways. My contract was not renewed. Thank you for the three years. It the last three years, it was fun. I'm sad. It feels like a breakup. I like doing all this stuff, mm-hmm. but you know, I'm moving on. So I thought that that she handled it very well. I wish I had seen that chill side of her. Yes, the whole you know the whole time she always seems so wound so tight to me. Yeah, when she when she was like addressing um, Denise, and she's like, she said, "You think I'm pathetic." 
<laughs> that you can't stand me, that I live. You know what? I'm not going to sugarcoat it anymore, Denise. Brandy said that you and she had sex. <laughs> what? I know. That was Where's like... the chill? Where's the, <laughs> hey, guys, got to hang out with Dove, my baby, and uh, quit thing... this shit. That whole thing was so crazy. We spent so many episodes about this, we, Denise. We. <laughs> we. It's a collective experience. <laughs> what so we've been episodes. through. About freaking Brandy and Denise, and you're like, she clearly doesn't want to talk about this. I get she signed up for yeah. a show. As a currently employed lesbian yourself, yep. what is your, uh, everyone knows my opinion that okay. listens to the show. What is your opinion of what went down? Brandy and Denise, just tell me your thoughts. Oh, I want to hear your thoughts. I haven't well, heard. Well, my thoughts are definitely it happened. Okay. Um... But I just don't think it was right for Brandy to put it out there and share right. it, knowing that it, you know, knowing by sharing it, get on the show. Yeah. Knowing that the show, then we're going to make it it. Because right. in Denise's defense, it isn't something that happened between a cast member. It really didn't happen while they were filming. Right. So it shouldn't and be And it such certainly didn't fodder. happen on camera. Yeah. And there's things that happen on camera that the producers bury right. to protect people. So the fact that it was none of that. But I also understand the series of events and how it came about. And yeah. come on, the show is boring. What, are we not going to share this? I know. But I feel like it, it was unfair. So much time on I it. think it was unfair to Denise because... You know, she well, got together with a girl and it, she didn't thought it was between them. You know, well, that's the, it. If Denise had an interesting thing because her first season she was very cool and like, oh, I give it, you know, Aaron does happy endings. I got it for yeah. him. And then the second season she was almost like, like, you know, don't talk about sex. And you're like. What? Oh, you were so taken by the edit. That is not true. She didn't say it. She did, but it was like because like the girls <laughs> so were right there. Taken by the edit. The girls were right there and they were talking and and um She was just trying to she Eric it, Jane it, was like, I was with a couple once, you know, and like <laughs> they're like literally she's like, Could you guys just keep it down? I and see, then I she, see. and then she like, come on, it wasn't she was still cool, she was still laughing, yeah. she was trying to try to have fun. They were jealous that she became Saint Denise, that okay. everyone loved her. That she was making the most because she probably had the highest quote. And yeah. they've, they've worked the pavement. They've had to go on these awful trips for years. And Denise walks in and she's the star. Okay. And she's getting all the accolades. And then this information falls in their lap. And, they and were, they're pissed. They're they pissed to that she, down. Yeah, they're pissed that she, she didn't show up as much. They're pissed that she left. Yeah. They're pissed, you know. And, and I think when it was presented to her in that moment in Rome, she was so, like, shocked that well, she, yeah, pulled like, she, she pulled like a Bill Clinton where like she immediately just said, not no, true. Like nothing happened. Not yeah. true. And then there was no way then to go back and go, all right, you guys. Right. You caught me off guard. Yeah. One night we had too much cast amigos. I'm not going to go through it. We made out. We fooled around. It was no big deal. We were friend. We we're more friends. Right. We we're more friends and lovers. It wasn't anything. I mean, that's what I think. Yeah. I, I mean, I do think there's a, it's, very probable that something happened. Yeah. As to the extent of it, I don't know. Uh, but either Aaron knew. Yeah. And she just didn't want everybody else to know. Or right. he genuinely didn't know. That's the one part I'm not sure about. Right. Uh, but I do think she just didn't want to talk about it because she thought it was very but private. what do you think about the whole reason that Brandy supposedly well, had to come forward is that she felt that she was tricked into being a cheater because Aaron oh. didn't know. You, as a woman who's a lesbian, who I assume has made out with some women that might be in a relationship with a man, I'm assuming <laughs> that may have happened. I don't know. Did you feel? Have you ever been tricked into being a cheater? I'm a I'm Saint Fortune. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in L in L A, you know, <laughs> I've experienced people. Uh, in the past, yes. Uh, the the boundaries are different. The right. People in LA don't want to be like in a relationship, so they're right. they're always like, "You're like, but do you have a boyfriend? I don't really understand." Yeah. No. No. Yes, but no. And so like, right. You get into like really tricky territory. Uh, so I can see it being like confusing with Denise because she's. There's yeah. rumors that, I don't know, about her and Aaron being open to things. And right. You don't really know what the rules are. I don't know that it would have, I, I can't say for sure. Yeah. I don't know that Brandy would have pumped the brakes had Denise said, you know, truly been like, he doesn't know. 
She doesn't strike me. As, I, I mean, but I could be well, wrong. But she, she got, but she that's got cheated on. That's what Brandy on. said. Brandy said that's really the last time that they physically ever got to even got together for coffee. Okay. Last time they ever saw each other was in that sad, weird hotel yeah. cottage room where they were doing the Hallmark movie. And after they woke up, um, you know, but now Brandy's like, I wasn't into it. So I gave her all these love bites on her body because oh, I was just didn't love know I was bites. being attacked by her. I don't know. And then she said, Aaron didn't, um, Aaron will freak out. So I'm going to say it's from my corset in this weird Hallmark movie. And then from there, um, I think it was just texting, texting stuff after yeah. that. And then they finally saw each other. At the Christmas party, and then there were texts that Brandy recently shared in a Daily Mail article where Denise was like, can we talk? This isn't going to be, this is, this, we can both, she's basically saying, we can both fix it. You probably don't want this out either. Uh-huh. And, Den- and at that point, Brandy, it had already been said on the show yeah. in Rome. So then Denise tried to get a hold of Brandy and been like, let's so, get our story straight oh, really? so that we can get this together removed off the show or you can at least go, I wasn't telling the truth. Well, at that point, Brandy knows that she already spilled it all in detail in yeah. the Kyle closet. But Anne, it's already been filled. And so she's just like, but Anne, too Brand- late. Yeah. And Brandy doesn't want to not be on the exactly. show. So Brandy's like, I got nothing to lose. My kids know I'm buying. I don't give a shit. Yeah. So like she didn't care. And so by Denise, but there was a point where Denise did try to be like, whoa, you probably, you know, let's try to fix this. And then at that point, it was Brandy who kind of then right. was like. Well, she knew how much airtime yeah. she was going to get. Yeah, I'm sure. that she know. <laughs> so anyway, she's gone. Yeah. And then do you know about all the heat she got from her diet? I do, yeah. I assume you're someone that <laughs> definitely had signed up for I'm that program. I'm on the diet. It's not working. <laughs> No, I've never done all in. Uh, I knew someone that did, um, but this was early on before Teddy was on the show. Yes. Uh, but uh, I never knew what the calorie situation was or what this person was eating. I only knew about the ca- accountability part. Right, the texting. I knew about the texting and the the taking pictures of yeah. the scale and stuff. And well, once people started to like share their text messages and stuff of what it was, mm-hmm. and like... And just one text message just made me really sad. Oh, really? And it was this girl took a photo of what looked to be about the size of your palm. No. It was a few, some some lentils and some, a little bit of broccoli, maybe two things of spinach. And you know how you take a carrot and you slice it? Yeah. It was about three of those circles. Whoa. And, and she had two of those meals ready to go. And, and that was she, her meals for the day? She said, I'm prepped for tomorrow. And sent it to the coach. And then the coach wrote, good job. Lunch looks good. Um, Get rid of the carrots. There's too much sugar in the carrots. And then the girl wrote back, oh, I really like carrots. Okay. And I was like, and then another one was, whoa, few too many lentils there. No. Yes. So that is not the program for me. <laughs> I do not want to go all in. Not anything to do with her. I don't, her program might be great. I don't know. Yeah, uh, may not be. So you have never been on a 500 day calorie I couldn't, diet. I couldn't do that. I mean, I get that I need to. <laughs> but I think, isn't the whole point of it's making a lifestyle change something you can sustain? No one can sustain. Well, they just say it's a jump start. Then, but how then long are you, you supposed to do it for? I think you have to have soup every night for dinner for the rest of your life. I don't know if you can get off the, the only, soup. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm sure. not here to promote any diets because yeah. obviously I'm not the pillar of health. I've only one only one thing. Oh, ever, I know what your diet is. Mine it's your the, own. The ice cream dance diet. That is the diet. I don't know if you guys know. One of the reasons Fortune is here. We like to usually plug things at the end. Is you have started your own multi-level marketing diet and cardio plan. I have a pyramid scheme. And it's called the ice cream dance. I wish. Why don't you tell people about it? <laughs> Guys, get yourself an ice cream and dance your way into the jeans you've always wanted to wear. <laughs> and, I so, d- and what people can do is that they can go, uh, once they've gone through the program. You buy ice cream that I've made. Yes. And then they and It's full of peanut butter. A couple dances, a couple dance routines. <laughs> then they get people underneath them. Yep. And then they say, send the video of you dancing, dancing. to your uh, afternoon snack ice cream. Yep, yep. Um, and then we they write back and they go, you didn't dance long enough. Uh-huh. 
Um, we, we like songs about three and a half minutes, not three. <laughs> and then they have to go back and redo it. And the program's $10,000. <laughs> Which, you know what? You're worth it. That's a whole thing. That's what, what, that's what people say is like, you need that accountability because right now you're not thinking you're worth an ice cream or three and a half minutes of dancing. And you know what? You are. We're going to call it fortunes all out. All out. <laughs> Okay. A little dancing, a little so, dancing. So, and anybody that wants to look into it. People are going to hit me up, for real. Absolutely. I can't wait. If you're a stay-at-home <laughs> mom, if you're not a mom, if you're just staying home, this is something that you can do. Because all you have to do is just text the people. I would rather do them it. Saying they didn't dance long enough. I would rather dance with ice cream than only 500. I mean, uh, what is a... Uh, a scoop of ice cream is probably like just a teaspoon but is 500 is a, calories. But this is a different, <laughs> but see, this is a whole different lifestyle. Yes, yeah, true. It's a lifestyle. That is true. But I think here's the thing with, with this thing is, yeah. is that she had this program before. Right, right. And it was doing well locally. Yeah. I just think with a lot of these shows, once you get on this show, these things blow up very quickly, very fast. And then you're, you know, what you were maintaining pretty easily at a smaller level, right. you're suddenly thrust into this national, sometimes worldwide situation. She, I think she probably got in over her head a little bit. Again, I don't know. This, I don't think, I'm not I ripping on the program because I don't know it. Someone started pointing it now, and, and who knows? Yeah, but she started hiring tons of right, right. these, um, I don't know what you, counselors? The or accountant. They, I mean, the accountability but people. Yeah. I think part of the drama, uh, allegedly, is that a lot of these people aren't certified. Well, no, but neither she. No one oh, is. Oh, really? No, it's just like a, a program. I assume she it's was. A, just a program that she created. Oh, okay. That, like, you know, in just studying stuff, but she's not a nutritionist yeah. and she's not a dietitian and she's not a personal trainer. Uh -huh. But also, you sign a bunch of things saying, I know all this, but I'm, it's almost, it's just a coach. It's just like yeah. anything else. It's an act, you know, these, like, like a divorce coach, a coach, you know, like where they just, People have like well, business coaches I where they that, like say, "Wake up!" Yeah, that was the whole model: shit. the yeah. accountability. Yeah, which I don't think you need to be certified to keep make people right. accountable. Yeah, but then yeah. the diet came. Anyway, she's gone. Anyway, we don't know. And then they say Kathy Hilton might come in. Oh, oh, interesting. And be like a friend or something, or be maybe part of it. I always feel like it's an interesting group. I feel like Sutton belongs to like New York, the New York cast. Oh, really? She seems kind of waspy for Beverly Hills. Well, I don't know, Fortune. Why do you think I don't belong here? Because I'm not rich enough? I am. Did you not see my plane? Though Garcelle didn't want to go on it because she said she couldn't go on plane since she was a model. I mean, I think clearly there's no question you're very rich. It's just, you know, you like couture. You like, you know, off, run, off the runway looks. You, That's right. You like old money. You like golf. Oh, I won't turn down new money either, Fortune. I know, but like these ladies, you know, they're all living in the valley now. <laughs> and you just strike me as someone who's more of a Hamptons type of gal. I agree. I mean, I just think, but I, I like her. I definitely think she's going to come back. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I feel like... And it would be fun to see more of her life. I don't know. I was about to say, we didn't see a because lot. Because the, the ex-husband wouldn't let the kids be part of it. Oh, and when that not. happens, it's like, you don't really get to see someone's life. Right. You know? So yeah. maybe now that the kids are older or whatever, maybe gonna... like one can be featured. Oh, I don't know. Because really? I know she had one high school one, so I don't know how old yeah. they are. But Kathy Hilton's always her... a good time. I'd I like to see, see her more doing of her. the show. That'd be interesting to me. Yeah, I think she'd be funny and good. All right, what do you think about this quarantine breakup? Oh, I don't know Dr. about this. Dr. Dre, how do you not know about this? I, do, I don't know. I missed it. Dr. Dre's wife of 32 years, they're getting divorced. Her name is Nicole Young. She's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, they have some kids. She Now, he is worth a shit ton. Like, I don't I know. know if he's he worth sold a, those Beats headphones. Yeah, I don't know if he's worth a billion, but I think he's pretty damn close. Yeah. So she's not stupid. She's asking for $2 million a month. Whoa. In support. Wow. She, but she line, she line item it. And uh, mm. entertainment is 90000 a month. Ooh. Yeah. That's my rent. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> 90 grand? Well, what is, what are you using to entertain you? I don't know. Especially because you can't have any parties during COVID. Like, what do you have? Like, that, that would be like a, 
The only way that you could do that is, I mean, I guess you could justify anything. Like, you're going to go see a concert. You're going to take a private jet and go see that concert. You're going to stay at the hotel to, to be entertained. Two it's million a month is, ex is very excessive. And then anyway, she stole 300000 The latest article, she th stole 300000 from his studio fund. And then they said, Nicole, you can't do that. And then she went and stole another 30000 oh. So, I don't know. They're, they're going to have some issues with this divorce. Yeah. Anytime someone's super, super rich and gets divorced, it's usually not pretty. But Kelly was like, we were talking about it. And she's like, my God, they've been married so long. Mm -hmm. Like, what? Why now? Like, this made How her like snap. Oh, they've been together like 25 years. Oh, wow. A really long time. I think it's the COVID. People <laughs> have never spent this much time with their partners before. And they don't know how to handle it. They're running out of things to talk about. Because guys like him probably just traveled all the time and worked all the time. All I can think about is Erica Jade in the reunion, which goes, Motherfucker, I'm out. <laughs> she said that. Like, I just feel like she was like, I'm fucking out. Yeah. So I think... Uh, I think there's a lot of divorce happening. At yeah, the I mean, I have a couple other breakups. Your girl, Kelly Clarkson. I love me some Kelly Clarkson. And her husband, who is the stepson of Reba McIntyre, mm -hmm. and he had a couple kids and they had a couple together yep. and they just couldn't have been cuter and happier. They started I, having some troubles. What? I saw her. I mean, I saw her right before quarantine. I did yeah. her show right. like a week before lockdown. Or your the week. whole your whole life was taking off before COVID. I had <laughs> six months of theaters sold out. They were already Horrible. sold out. They were adding second and third shows. I was and I knew what I would have made. And it, my first show was supposed to be March sixteenth, and it all got wiped out. You're someone that I often talk about in that you know there are certain people that it really was a huge ass bummer. Yeah, you know, it's a big ass bummer. Because <laughs> you're mean, like right on this tour, and it was right after your special, and it was just like a perfect, you know. I had five thing. movies that were come, supposed to come out this year too. But you're you're in five movies. I mean, I'm not the star of them, but I was in five movies. I haven't even seen five movies. Uh, two have been this pushed year. already to next year. One yeah. I, they ended up cutting me out of because. They didn't have time for that scene. At least or, they didn't replace you with Tig. That, oh, that's <laughs> like true. Like Chris D'Elia. Uh, but they, yeah. My shows have all been pushed to next year. Hopefully yeah. people still want to see comedy then. But it was the first time in my career yeah. I didn't have to beg people to, people come. to come to my shows. To, you know, beg for, I mean, that special came out and those tickets just yeah. flew. And, I, and I'd been Working so hard Waiting for, for those moments of waking up and being like, okay, so that one's sold out. You want to do this other one? It's the yeah. greatest. And it's the, the biggest stress about performing is what are the ticket sales? So to know yeah. that you could have just gone. And the Dallas was 1,700-seat theater. Already sold out. Already the second one was almost like it was like a week away from selling out. Anyway, I'm not sitting here. So you went and saw Kelly Clarkson. But my point is, did she give any indication? <laughs> I, I will tell you real quick though. I'm not complaining because literally this pandemic has sucked ass for everyone. Yeah. So no one's in a great place right. uh, with it. So I'm not sitting here boohoo me. Uh, yeah. Kelly, uh, I saw her the week of lockdown, and he was he's a producer on our show. He's there and nice and everything's cool. But you, like, it's not like you're gonna really know that. There's Trouble in Paradise. And then I did her show uh, like three weeks into quarantine on the Zoom. And right. she was in Montana, but everything seemed well, normal. Well, she said that's where it really ended was the quarantine in Montana. There, But, you know, obviously there and had to be problems well, leading Peter, up to Peter that. Well, Peter last night goes, you have to do this story. I just saw this like on Insider Edition. Kelly Clarkson tried to save her marriage by... Go, getting a small cabin with her family. And I go, so yeah. we looked it up. It wasn't a small cabin, though, oh, was, was it? it? I don't know. We can't she, find it. She said it was it like barely had running water. Oh, okay. So then you did hear. Okay, then this yeah. is. So why would she choose such a, a, a small, shitty place? Why not get I a beautiful not, ranch? A lot of rich know. people thrived during the pandemic because they went to. Other states. They went to Wyoming. They went to Wyoming and they got a big space and they were like living I'm, the life. I have no idea. When I saw her on that Zoom, she was said that they were just like hunkered down in this tiny. Why were you going to play with no cabin? running water? I, I mean, I think it. It. I don't really understand. She just said, "I don't know." If she could have just been joking. She's like, "I had to use my daughter's squatty, her little." Oh my! It was a, that was probably a joke though, but. So does he still, this is what I want to know, and let me know if Kelly Clarkson fans know this. 
Does he stay on as EP of this show? She she just her show just started back up, and it, she said on the show that she did not see this coming, and that he is a great friend, and he's the reason she decided to do this show. I think he might stay on for now. I mean, but unless. He's already not there. I don't know. I think that's a horrible idea. Because okay. she, he was also helping manager. Yeah, yeah. You gotta get rid of him. <laughs> I don't. Well, know. the other cor- the other quarantine breakup that happened was with that girl, and I, the name is not. To so give me a minute, but that the the one that uh, girl wash your face. Rachel. Rachel Hollis. She's like a big inspirational coach speaker. And her husband sure. was mean, yeah. working with her, and yeah. then they broke up. And then she said he was going to stay on, but now I don't think he is. I Maybe mean, I, th- right. I do. Th- I think with every divorce, it evolves yeah. into either you figure out a way to do it, or you say we can't do this. But it's too soon, I think, to tell. So this girl yeah. is Christine. Oh yeah, Onstead. She used to be Christine El Muso when she was married to the, Tarek El Muso with Flipper. Flip- yeah, Flipper <laughs> Flop. They got divorced. She married this cute guy Aunt. named Aunt Anstead. They had a little baby. She already had two kids with Tarek. Mm-hmm. Anyway, they just announced that um, after two years, they're getting divorced. They've tried long enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not laughing at divorce. I don't understand how, like, two years in, you're just like, I can't take it any longer. You couldn't ride it out for a little bit more? To... I don't know. I mean, I, every relationship is different. Maybe you really feel like there's no hope, or maybe because some... you've already been through a divorce once, yeah. that once you start seeing some signs that you're like, I'm not putting up with this, that Unless you're like, let cheated. me cut it off sooner. Why do I have to stay five years just to stay face? Like, get the fuck yeah. out. I can flip and flop a house by myself. Unless someone cheated. We don't know. Yeah. Because that, that's a pretty quick deal breaker for a lot of people. But her ex... Tarek is with this girl, Heather Ray, from Selling Sunset. Yep, yep. I just did her podcast. I think it's coming out this week. She's very delightful, very cute, very in love with him. Oh, cool. But one thing is, it's just interesting because she, their Instagram is a lot of how much they're in love, how much oh, they're in love. That's always a red and flag. And then recently, like with the announce of the ex saying, now I'm no longer with this one. Yeah. It's even more. Even more? I thought it might I, have scaled back. No, I think, and I'm not saying she's at all threatened. I'm not. But I'm saying if it was me and my husband's very successful, beautiful ex-wife has now left her second husband and she's around and we have a great relationship sharing the kids and stuff, I wouldn't be thrilled about that. I'm not saying I... That I'd be threatened, but I wouldn't be thrilled about it. I'd rather see that woman with her husband and not, like, Mm. being free. And that's some juicy (laughs) goob. (laughs) I don't know. I think. But, I mean, they seem happy and confident. He and the other one fought all the time. I don't know if it was for the show, but they did not seem to have. Uh, well, good. So hopefully, I, mean, he's I, I think Heather Ray is fine. And just keep posting your, like, the love of my life photos. (laughs) Um, our people are our, our Meghan Markle and yep, Harry. Yep. I don't know if you're aware of it, but they bought a beautiful home Look at in that. Montecito. There's a tennis court, obviously a pool, lots of grass that's, for that's way Archie better to run around in. That's way better than that cottage they were in. Had to share with the yeah, roommates. Yeah, they were that, back in the backyard cottage. Yeah, <laughs> in England. <laughs> Um, That's beautiful. So this is just a little, this is a bitter, bigger glimpse of it. Looks very Italian villa like. I mean, it is freaking stunning. Yeah, but they, and um, they're getting hounded by the paps. I don't know if they're getting hounded by the paps, but um, I, I'm sure she's heard from her sister Samantha. <laughs> Okay. Because there's a lot of fun things to do, Samantha. Before you call, I just want to tell you all the fun things okay. that you can do in Montecito. Sure, sure, sure. This is this place that Oprah loves. Oh, I think called... I've seen Ellen's picture <laughs> there, yeah. too. What is it? Janine's? Janine's. Janine's. They have two locations. And it's one of those places where you can get a crumpet. I'm sure they sell lemon curd. Mm. Just oh, to rub it all there. I love a lemon curd. Here's another look. I mean, could not be cuter, Janine's, right? Janine's, yeah. So, recently, Megan was just um, unpacking some of her Chanel flats when the phone rang. Hello. Oh, 
Megan, oh my god, I cannot believe that you answered. This is crazy. Hi, Samantha. Oh, I am so pumped that you have moved to the States. You're back, sis. Actually, not really. We're really quite busy. We have a charity. We have a foundation. We're doing so much right now to try to get the vote out. Um, I've got, you know, I've just, oh my God, I'm absolutely swamped. I'm trying to unpack my clothes at this, you know, the closet's not what I thought it was going to be. Megan, I, listen, I hear you. You're busy. I just want to celebrate the fact that I don't have to get on a plane anymore. That's pretty cool. I just made my way up here to Santa Bubra. Oh, you're, you're already here? Yeah, I'm outside the gate. Uh, no, the, the guards not letting me in. I, you know, I assumed that security would not be as intense as it was in England. And it's pretty, it's a lot, Megan. You're kind of getting a little big for your britches. I know, Samantha, you tell me that all the time. And in every interview that you do, I did not invite you. My afternoon is packed. I'm having lunch with um, a friend. I <gasps> cannot see. What? 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 Wait, wait, wait. You know, lunch is my favorite meal of the day. Where? Can I just ask where, because I've been, I've, I bought a book. Oh. It told me all the hot spots. <laughs> you know I love a hot spot. And uh, I know where all the hot spots are. I know where Oprah loves. I know where Ellen loves. I know where. I mean, I don't even know Oprah and Ellen. I mean, I uh, met them, I don't know, five or six times, but we're not Rob close. Rob Lowe. They all live up here. You mean Robbie? Uh, I call you, him Robbie. Oh, my God. You know him? I mean, just. I watch his sex tape. Over and over and over. Oh, Samantha, that was so long ago. I the know. Democratic Convention. Well, listen, where are you going to lunch? Please, just um, tell me. I just, it's just this little cafe. It's, <gasps> you wouldn't know it. It's a, just a hole in the wall, but it's actually on a sidewalk worth about uh, <gasps> $2 million. <laughs> Wait, you're not going to Janine's, are you? How did you know about Janine's? I read it in my book, Megan. <laughs> I, I purposely showed up here before lunch thinking we could go to Janine's together. Well, it, it's very difficult to get to, and the sidewalk is not wide enough <gasps> for... Megan? What? I, you need to make some phone calls, then. It's it, look, Get it fixed. Just look at the photos online. There's small tables for two. I can I make cannot... it work. I have a tray. Me okay, Megan, will you at least let me in to use the bathroom? Actually, the guard has a bathroom in his um, in his area. And oh. I'm I'm gonna call him on the other line. I hello, hello, Ryan, Ryan. It's Megan. My sister is there. Could you just open the gate just enough to let her roll in, and let her use the restroom with the in the guard's tower? Thank you. Okay, you're all set. Um, tell Daddy I love him. I'll talk to him soon. I'm going to be so late, and you know how I've always been prompt, even growing up as a child. So goodbye, Samantha. I, I, wait, 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 Megan, wait, 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 what? wait. Can you, at, okay, can you at least bring me a pair of candlesticks? Samantha. I know you brought some from England. I know, <sighs> just... Just two no, of them. No, we did not take any of them. That was part of the Windsor Mansion and the family. And uh, we had to give up our name. And we had to give up. We had to give up our name of the Sussex people. And we had to give up uh, all of our candlesticks. Uh, I absolutely don't have any. So yeah, uh, that was, enough with that. That was stupid. Well, okay, goodbye. Take least, care. Can you at least call Netflix? No. Nope. Tell them to put me in something. N Megan. I, I hung up now. Man. This does look cute, though. That does. It's like the Ivy meets Earth Cafe. Yeah. <laughs> well, our girl, Lori Laughlin, um, yep. is going to serve her two-month sentence in the prison of her choice. Oh, look at that. That's a pretty good picture somebody took. She's giving the look of, like, That's what she looks so sad. Face. And I looked into it. The mm. prison she chose is Victorville Prison Camp for Women. She got to choose? Well, I think this is a little bit, like, if I asked my sister, the defense attorney, I, I would say this is a little bit for headlines. It sounds oh. like she's, like, choosing. Okay. But most people do get, especially when they're not a violent criminal, 
they get to choose one that's closer to their home. I mean, why do we have to spend money on sending them away right. to a different state or something? So she had a choice of two, and she chose the Vic. I mean, I think she had a choice of a few, and the Victorville one is the closest to her house, and so that is what she chose. And um, but well, some people are not happy about it because they do think it's special treatment. Well, it, uh, yes, obviously it is. Yes, but do you think that her go- spending all the money she did and all the time was worth it? Do you think that? Like, do you oh, think like had had she done? No, had she, she should have done what Felicity Huffman did, and she would have probably she gone for like in, a month or something. I mean, it's like also when people get in trouble with um, tax evasion and stuff. Yeah. Like, immediately you should go, "Oh my God, what kind of mistake did I make? Tell me what I need to do to fix it. Tell me what I need to write. Yeah, how much do I have to pay? Do not try to fight this shit because you will end up in jail. And had she just a right, a, like, been like, "Oh my God, we were, you know." We, I, I am so sorry. Yeah. I, what do I need to do? And done like a Felicity Huffman. Yeah. No, but I think I mean, she had her husband in her ear and right. they've been married a long time. So when you've been well, married that long, she's probably influenced by him. And Well, because she, pro- she would have gone longer than Felicity because she went, because uh, cause her daughter actually got it. Like she went further yeah. than Felicity. But so, but I think she probably spent millions of dollars defending herself, defending herself, and she probably originally would have gotten like a month, or <laughs> yeah, no, I I think, and I really think that the people that are really shitty in this whole thing are the people that worked at USC that took the money from Singer when they were already getting a salary. And when the guy that was facilitating well, Singer, all of yes, it. he's in yeah. a lot of trouble. But then he had all these other people working at the schools that then were taking the money. And then they would say, oh, I, I have my team ready right. on the rowing team, and this is them. And they I approve them as having grades and stuff. And then they give it to their boss, and they go, okay. And, like, they, you know, so it's those people, which I'm sure have all been fired, but yeah. they should have gotten in trouble for that, too. Right. But, you know, having to motivate Drake to start getting out his apps, <laughs> I have ripped on this woman so much, and I want to say, Lori, I fucking get it. <laughs> Oh, I get man. it. I'm not rich like that. I wouldn't do it. Well, other people, but like... I get the temptation. I really do. Right. It's a pain in the fucking ass. And like, I just saw that this girl on my um, Facebook, she just went and signed. You know, her kid was finally going to be able to take the ACT or the SAT. They found a place and to drive there to do it. Yeah. Because she still wanted him. They they there's they don't have to right now because of COVID. Okay. But she still wanted him to take it because she. Made him prep for a year, Oof. paid for a private tutor, yeah. and is hoping that this test will, like, you know, help his overall thing. Yeah. And they, the night before, they're like, sorry, he can't take it. Oh, We're done. Boy. And I'm like, well, yeah. at least, you know, at least I didn't go down that road. I mean, right. Drake took a couple weekends of prep class, but I didn't pay for someone to come and yeah. teach him for $10,000 like other people do, which is another reason why it should be done, because it's too unfair. These people have extra help. but yeah. And they have extra time. Let me tell you the biggest scoop, people. Here it is. It's coming, y'all. Juicy scoop. The reason maybe these tests should be gone forever. I hate all those standardized tests. Is because there's about 30% of students who are taking these tests that are extremely wealthy Uh that get a note from a doctor that says they need extra time. Oh, right. They have ADHD or dyslexia. I don't know what they say, but they they get that letter. Okay. And imagine, you know, I remember taking the SAT as four hours. Imagine if you had three days. Imagine mm-hmm. if you go back. I always remember the hardest part was the reading comprehension. You read some boring story yeah. about like a squirrel or China or something, and then you'd be like, have to answer the questions. Well, God, if you could go back and read that 15 times, you'd probably get 100%. Yeah. I mean, that was like, so that is the, so anyway. Well, uh, the, well the standardized test is, to me, is it doesn't fit what where people are at realistically because – there's left brain, right brain, the right. whole, you know, certain parts of your brain. There's cer- certain kids who really do great with standardized tests. It's black and white. You have the other kids that are very creative. Their mind thinks differently. Yeah. I was one of those kids. So I did horrible SAT. I was horrible. But I scored a five on my writing test. There was only two people in the whole state of North Carolina they got a five, not for, this is not SAT, but there was like a comprehensive okay. writing thing. I was only one of two students in my entire state that got a five. 
which was the highest you could get. Have you guys noticed that but fortunes I become a little braggy during SAT. the COVID? SAT. Yeah. Bombed it. I mean, I, they could have given me a week. I would have bombed it. I just, so, certain people anyway, can't I, do it. Anyway, I, I'm just saying it's a lot that goes into this shit and a lot of money. And I think, like, I get the temptation when you're that wealthy to just be like, right. all right, and just fill it out. Well, I've been trying to get this kid to fill out something. Just fit to fine, do it. Well, I think anyone with a lot of money has a tendency to try yeah. to throw money at a problem and right. fix it, right? But I will say, so she's going to her Victorville prison, and I thought about myself. Now, I have always I thought... I would love to see you in prison, just... Just to get the juicy scoop from that's what I that's a why week. I would go like this, a week. Yes, this is what I think. I've oftentimes thought about what my life would be like in prison. <laughs> now I don't want to go for like killing my husband or something no, no, and no. be set, go, never getting out. No, but I always wondered like, like you uh, didn't they, pay a bunch of parking tickets. I don't know, or like what this would be. First of all, what I would do, and I've thought about it. first. Of, well, leading up to the prison time, yeah. I would not get Botox or anything. Oh, I'd right. let this fucking face fall. Yep. I'd get cool sculpting because that takes three months to cool have the result. Sculpt. Okay. So I'd do all the cool sculpting, but no Botox or anything. Mm -hmm. I'd go in there. I'd not be not able to drink. I'd work out. I'd get major fucking juicy scoop from all the people. Because yeah. I I am not going to be a snob like her. I'm. You'd be, wa you'd be interviewing. I want to hear everybody's yeah. story. I'm not going to be. And you want to hear about the murders that people well, committed? Well, I don't. No one's. There's no oh. murderers at this one. It's minimal. But right. still, there's going to be some good stories. <laughs> so we're going to meet meet some people. Then I come out. Then I get a Sonia Morgan like facelift. Okay. Facelift. Then I color the hair. Yep, yep. Come out shebang. Come out with so much juicy material. So you you could start a podcast on top of Juicy Scoop, right? That is Juicy Scoop Prison Edition. <laughs> totally. But Only I don't think she's gonna on Patreon. I don't think she's gonna utilize it like that. Unfortunately, no. She wants to sweep it under the rug and not enjoy the time that she can. The only thing I've heard, the worst thing I've heard about prison, mm -hmm. is you've talked to a lot of people. I have talked to some people, and a consistent thing is people crying and yelling throughout the night, and how they cannot sleep at all. Okay. Because yeah. no, because people are crazy and they're miserable and they're they don't care that they're screaming. Yeah. And that is what I think would be the hardest because I really like like to have a undisturbed a nice sleep. sleep. Well, Lester Holt from Dateline spent couple of nights in prison. Oh yeah, and I saw he that. He said that there's night, a lot of screaming, a lot of right? screaming and yeah. talking at night. Yeah, and then they wake you up at like five thirty right. for breakfast. I'm like, why? I'm like not hungry till nine. Yeah. <laughs> like, why do they gotta eat at five thirty? You're just making, you're just paying security extra money to have to start work earlier. Yeah, I don't know. Let's push it to seven thirty. I know. What do they got to show? What yeah. do they got to <laughs> up and at them to do what? I know. Like, let them fucking sleep. Very weird. The other thing is I sleep with about four to five pillows. Wow, that's and a I lot. And I know that's going to be really hard to they're get not that many gonna, pillows. They're not going to give you... You'll get one. But in the commissary, you could buy so much extra stuff, and I bet you could buy extra pillows. But I bet they'd be stolen. I bet yeah. then they'd be like, that bitch, like, how do I protect my pillows? Because it's like a dormitory. They said this camp thing. Yeah. It's where, like, Teresa kind of went. Teresa said, Judas. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, you know, you make up your bed or whatever, yeah. and then your pillows are there. And if I had five pillows, you think I'm going to come home, come back from yoga or Pilates, no. and my pillows are still going to be, be there? They'd be gone. That's why I'm not going to get in trouble. Please don't. Be a real follower. I don't know if you're watching 90 Day Fiance, or have you watched any? These are the classic couples. I watched couples. the latest ones. So this is, so you might know this couple. This is Andre and Elizabeth. I don't. They got married in Bulgaria, or I don't know. Bulgaria? They basically had the worst <laughs> wedding ever. <laughs> Bulgaria. Where is it? Bulgaria. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a country I'm not aware of. I know of Bulgaria. It's not Bulgaria. But I love it. It's even something. Moldova. Yeah. Moldova. Mold like Bulgaria. I, but, but I, I merged Mold, Moldova. I, I merged Mold, okay, I merged Moldova and Bulga Bulgaria, Bulgaria and made it Bulgovia. I love it. Bulgaria. Okay. So if they ever merge... Um, anyway, they had the worst wedding ever because yeah. this girl's brother, Charlie, he, during the wedding, he just starts freaking out. He wasn't the DJ? No. Okay. <laughs> Look at all these people dancing. All of a sudden, he's like, 
super wasted and just mad that the dad paid for the wedding. Okay. But the dad paid for his wedding, too. Yeah, so that's dumb. They hate each other. I, I was like, this is the worst wedding ever. I just uh-huh. want to catch you up on you. Okay. This is Larissa. Yep. She got a nose job, her lips, her tits, and wow. her ass done. Whoa, that's a lot. Yeah. She's Owie. Still, also, she's been out here for many years, and she has three kids in Brazil that she never has seen. Oh, my God. The people, but I'm sure they, they like her ass. The people they find for the show. This is the couple I care about. Okay, who is this? This is Colty. Oh, that's the Colty. I know who he is. Colty, and these are some photos from- He has from- a new lady? It's not the same. I thought they got divorced. That was Larissa who got all the plastic surgery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's on it with a new like oh, white guy in okay. Vegas getting all that plastic he surgery. He has a new one? He had a girl from Brazil, but they broke up. But he since, in real life, has started an, um, an fans-only site. Oh, because Only fans. Only fan. Uh, so- so he's posting sexy photos of himself. Yeah. Oh, that's so great. Oh I just noticed where, how like where, bad the products are. Where's his the mom? products are like he didn't have from his, the ninety nine cent store. He didn't have his mom sponge bathing him. The mom definitely took the photos. I think he's still living with his mother. Yeah. And but we had a very interesting scene the other day, where <laughs> I got some food. That's the way she talks. And oh my gosh. Colty said, um, "You know, mom, I just think like, um, you know, the reason all my women in my life have problems with you is they feel competitive with you because you know you cook and you clean for me and you make it a way that um they that's something that they want to do and it's compa- so what are you saying Colty? you don't want me to do your laundry anymore well guess what i'm not doing it anymore <sighs> i'm not Colty. wow i you know i've had enough i you know you're my son i think that we have a great relationship i think these girls are with you for the wrong reasons. They all want the green card. And now you're turning this on me because I like to cook for you and fold your laundry. Well, get ready. Get ready for for some folding and, and washing some dishes. And you know what? I think I'm going to stop taking those bubble bath photos for your OnlyFans, uh, oh, too. Mom. I, I think I am. I don't, I, I don't know that I have time. I don't know why you'd want your mom to do that. Maybe that's too much. And you know what? I'm not going to wash the back of your um, the back of your back anymore either. Mom, but you know all my angles. Well, you should have thought of that before you sat me down in front of cameras and said that I've ruined every relationship from Relis- from uh, you know Larissa to Jessica because I did not ruin those relationships. Those girls don't know how to treat you. They were jealous. And the cats and I are where it's at. And if you can't be happy with our house, I say you just get up and find your own house. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I'm sorry about the stuff. The producers, Too late. I'm upset. The producers made me say it. Too late. Uh, can you just, uh, for the next couple months, continue to do everything you've been doing? <laughs> and also, uh, here's my camera. I'd like you to take some pictures of me. All right, Colty. Well, I did a little research. And Black China, she likes to uh, do these shots where she leans up against something and oh. then turns coyly okay okay can you be coy uh we'll try because i think those might help but can, you, can you just hold my pants real quick i've got to get, get down to my speedo yeah i think i think speedos are good i think um shorts but you know leave a little something to the imagination not Maybe. much mom not much <laughs> <laughs> hold my light so anyway <laughs> They're they're upset with each other. He's, yeah. Have you heard of Real Housewives of Potomac? You know what? I keep being told I should get into the show. I've never watched it. Should I go back to season one and start? I mean, you can, but you can just hop on right really? now. Really? I could hop on right now and yeah. not be confused? I mean, go back a few episodes. Okay. But this girl, Ashley, she's gorgeous. She married this old Australian. Okay. And they have a baby. And he said, you have to take the baby to Monique's lake house. Mm -hmm. And this other girl just had a baby who's three months old. And she left her baby with her husband and nanny or whatever. Yeah. She's like, like, oh, I was hoping to have some friends with friends. He goes, now, come on. You know, you know. I can't really do Australian. But he's like. I can't really do it. Yeah. It's been a while. Good night, mate. Yeah. He's like, you got to take care of the baby. You said you would. You know, I have have a big, important meeting. So she's like, all right. So he goes to a meeting. Okay. And then. This has all been proven. Yeah. He leaves the meeting. He goes to a strip club. Uh He picks up some women with some other people. They go to some casino. 
From there, the woman goes, let's get a hotel room. He does. What? And then she gets a photo of him in no. his underwear, checking his phone in the morning. Dang. And gives it to some gossip site. Yep. It all goes. It's all featured on the show. She then goes, we need to talk about this. What happened, Michael? Like, yeah. clearly this is you. He's like, well, I'm very upset with myself that I did that. But I... Um, you know, had a few drinks, and you and I haven't been, you know, intimate the way we used to. They always say that. Because she said when she gave birth, it ripped her butthole a little. And I don't know why the butthole has to do with things, but I guess, I don't know if they boned at all or just not boning as much. Okay. But I think that is the grossest excuse ever. <laughs> so he basically, so it's your fault that your butthole tore when our, when our son's head came through your vagina. Ugh. And so he goes, and then... Uh, she said, you want to back, go back to her hotel room? I was so drunk. I was, just wanted to take a nap. Mm -hmm. So he goes to the hotel room, and he said he was having some Cheetos or something. That's all he remembers. And then he fell asleep. And the next morning he woke up, and she was in the bed next to him. <laughs> and then he got up to look at his phone, and that's when she snapped the photo. But he did not have he, sex okay. with her. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> Oh, come on. Dudes are so dumb. And also, why are you down to your underwear? Yeah. Why? So you what? passed out, well, and you had no intention of sex. Why did you take off all your clothes? Right. You would just plop down in your clothes. But I saw another video that they haven't featured on the show from the same gossip site where you hear, like, the woman's voice and stuff. Oh, really? And, and she, something she about... video, too? Yeah. Dang. Where he's like, you could go, we could go back to my place. Or she's like, I don't want to go back to your place. Like, she's being... Yeah. It didn't seem... Anyway, since then, yeah. she announced she's pregnant with her second child. <gasps> oh, the timing. No. Well, clearly they're having some sex. Right. This is a year after. So oh, she does so forgive she him, so and she's she pregnant now. Okay. And But people, there was some thought, like, I wonder if she just, you know, again, wants to forgive him, but also, like, you know what? It's my baby-making years. Let me just get have a couple kids with yeah. the same person. Let me give it one more shot. See if right. it works out. I don't want to try to have sex with, uh, have a baby with another right. person. Let it me is nice get my to kids have your uh, have your kid one have baby a sibling, daddy, one yeah. baby, one yeah. asshole baby daddy to deal with right. versus two, and then um, yeah. So who knows with that? Now with this girl Monique, she in the show has a podcast that says "Not for Lazy Moms." Oh, and speaking of ticket sales, she's going to have a live podcast, and she meets with she has this big beautiful office, and she goes there. And she's only sold 20 tickets out of 300. For the podcast? For the live podcast show okay. that they're going to feature on the show. But I looked into it, and she hasn't put out an episode since September of 2019. And the live show was supposed to be in November. So I don't think this show ever happened. Yeah. And, huh. and then she also mentioned to her husband that she's already put $200,000 into the podcast. What? <laughs> Why didn't she just pay you two hundred thousand dollars, and do uh and have have you uh, open her first podcast? Right? I don't I don't know. I'm like two hundred thousand. I'm like, was this girl tricked or was she just someone that like put four people? On, did you think she needed a, like a writing staff to like come up with a? She's a housewife. She's a housewife of Potomac. She's married to a very successful former football player. Okay. So they have a shit ton of money. They have five houses. Yeah. You know, and then I'm like. I wonder if the podcast is kind of like what rich women used to do like 20 years ago where they'd open like a candle shop. Right, right. Like everybody's just like, you know what? <laughs> Let me start this podcast. And then if they have a rich husband, they yeah. can convince them to, you know, make, be like, I need a staff. I need right. an office. I need an, a full-time audio yeah, producer. Office, I need this. I need a, yeah. And then I need, she's like, I already made all these flyers. And she goes, then the one girl says she's not going to be in anymore because they got in a fight at the lake house. And then she goes, I already made flyers featuring. <laughs> now I've got to get my graphic guy to redo it and make more flyers. I'm like, who's printing out flyers? What year is this? Are you printing it on trees? I mean, yeah, like, who are you going to hand it out to? But also, if your podcast is new or like you haven't done it in a year, don't start with a ticketed event. Just No, she had been doing it. Oh. I'm saying 
I noticed, so the event was going to be in a couple of months, but I noticed when I went on it that she hasn't done one in, in a year. While. And, I don't, and I don't think that one ever happened is what I'm saying. Oh, it was in the past. Yes. I, see, I don't I think see. it ever happened because but, the last one was in yeah. September and it was supposed to be in November I of see. last year, all of yeah. last year. Huh. Anyway, the point is. It sounds like. Uh, not for lazy mom. Sounds <laughs> like she got a little lazy. <laughs> But mm. honestly, she probably realized it's a lot it's, more fucking work than I thought. It's a lot of work. It's a lot I of think work. she might still just be pushing like online and, and a website, but maybe yeah. not the podcast. Speaking of lesbians, this is Sandy, Captain Sandy. Captain Sandy. Who I really enjoy. Hi, came Captain on the show. Sandy. Really like her a lot. She did a cameo for someone. Okay. Are you on cameo? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> she did a cameo and. She's reading the thing, walking around her house, and I guess they asked her something, what do you think of Malia, or do you think Malia's gay or something? And she goes, yeah, I've always thought Malia is a little gay. Okay. And oh, I and really that's... can't believe that she... And she said the whole crew thinks it, too. And, the, and she said, <gasps> oh, and the whole production crew, you mean? You can't believe she too. said that? I can't believe that she said it and then sent it out. Like, right. everyone should know that everything you do, whether it's a comment under someone's post or certainly yeah. a cameo... That they can share. I mean, the best cameo I saw was, and this went around, but because <laughs> you get these cameos, and mostly they're like, it's my mom's birthday, birthday you're great, yeah. whatever. But once in a while, I'll get something that sounds like an ad, like, just say that you love blah, 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 blah. And yeah. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Or I got one recently that said, um, Say that, you know, Susie and Joni are um, bad moms and don't support women. <gasps> no way. And so then I asked Cameo, I go, I got to make sure this is a joke. Yeah. Like, this isn't really me, like, bullying some of their moms. Like, this is a joke. Right. So then I'm like, okay, it's a joke. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to say, hey, haha, your friend, you know, because I'm like. Yeah, for sure. I don't need this out, me being like, hey, you're, you're a bad mom. So she just did what they said or asked or whatever. Right. Gay put out the cameo for whatever amount. And then, of course, it's went viral. Of course, yeah. And Malia has a boyfriend who was a chef. Oh, really? And she then has made a statement and said, um, like you know, I'm not gay, but uh -huh. if I was, I'd be really happy to be gay. Like, I have yeah. no problem with being gay, but I, I, you know, I'm not out. Because I'm not gay. Right. So the fact that she said it now to me is like, I mean, she didn't make that big of a deal because they right. probably still want to work together. Yeah. But what do you think of that being a working lesbian? I mean, <laughs> you know, so you, <laughs> there's certainly people where you're like, are they gay? Because they yeah. just give off a certain vibe. Right. But if someone's very adamant, you know, that they're not, you kind of just have to take it, take it. You can still think in the back of your head, like maybe. Yeah. But you have to kind of, you have to take it for face value that they're not. But I mean, certainly that's a weird thing to, unless she was trying to be ha ha funny. Cause who knows if, you know, the person was like a bunch of emojis, like say she's gay. Wink, right. Wink, right. Ha -ha. Yes. And she was like th thinking of it. In a I don't think Camp, uh, Sandy has done a response, but that would be a good one. Or maybe they... Oh, what did she oh, say? She, oh, she oh. said she was sorting out lying. Well, then all's forgiven. Well, I would have I would have just said what you said. I would have made... I'd be like, you know, I was I was under the understanding that it wasn't uh, for real. It caught me off guard. I thought, you know, be wild with the cameos. Like, I don't yeah. know, like, say something like that. Well, because everybody, anybody I've ever worked with, they're like, you know, so-and-so's this, right? And you're like, no, you know, or... Or you'll just laugh, like, ha oh, ha, whatever. Right. But, you know, it could, there's ways of kind of twisting things to, I don't or maybe she's... I've had a few shocking moments where I'm in a business meeting with someone, a guy that is, you know, you would 100% think mm -hmm. was gay. Like, nobody wouldn't think that. Yeah. And then... Th then you they then throws a little antidote about his wife. You're about to fucking <laughs> fall off your chair. You're like, how is a Hollywood agent uh -huh. in this year acting like this? Yeah, married to a woman. Oh, I've met some of those. Yeah, but I've said this before. I think there's more now that really are straight, but have that metro that, sexual yeah, thing. Yeah, or a, what would be considered a feminine uh -huh. personality traits from yesteryear, right. like is now just normal. It's because they're getting raised by all these liberals. 
they're more in touch with their feminine side. Maybe you're right. <laughs> Maybe you're right. I need I... their daddies to show them some Playboys. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad play. That's a problem. Playboy ended. I know. There. That was. That's the, the big. That that's a big ass problem. <laughs> Now tell me, you have a personal story about our <laughs> our friend here, Jason Momoa, Aquaman. Yes. Yeah, I had a weird celebrity encounter out of nowhere. Okay, tell us. I did a show in Phoenix. It was an outdoor driving show, like a corporate situation, and my partner is is very, you know, uh, cautious with the COVID stuff, so she did not want to get on a plane. Wait a minute, she, Jax. Yeah. Wait. Don't fall this, off your. Don't fall off your I had chair. I to fall off my chair. <laughs> Wait, I, you're romantically with a woman? Yeah, Heather, I'm not. I know it. I know I seem very feminine. Wow, wow. Um, but yeah, I hey, do each his own. I'm not. I read Playboy. <laughs> <laughs> you actually did have a dad that gave you Playboys. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, go on. Yeah, so, so you we, guys are driving. We decided to drive to Phoenix, so you have to go through the desert. Yeah. So past Palm Springs, past Joshua Tree, then like nothing. There's like a prison out right, there. Right. Yeah. No, that's, I think that's the Victorville prison. Oh, is Good it? Good wave to Lori, yeah. Yeah, and so uh, we're driving on the interstate. So, you know, everybody's going like 80 miles an hour. It's very fast. And I see these two huge sprinter vans on the side of the road with these uh, hitches on the back with ATVs. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that looks like a fun group of guys. You know, one of the vans is clearly broken down. But they've got it handled. I mean, there's a bunch of dudes and... You know, what am I going to do? Stop and be like, hey, fellas, you need a, <laughs> you need some help here. Everyone's got a cell phone. Yeah. And so there's this dude who's like super buff and he just ripped and he's tall and he's got these crazy black and white pants on. Yeah. And like a man bun. I mean, it is like any straight woman's <laughs> wet dream. Just yeah. that alone. Yeah. You can't see his face because he's. In the hood of the car, the van. Oh, to, and he can fix a car. Yeah. <laughs> or at least look like he's trying. <laughs> and you're like, is that, did this guy escape from prison? Why does he have black and white pants on? And we, I mean, this we passed by in five seconds. Right. If, if that. And I never see his face, but I don't know what it was about his body and these crazy pants and the man bun. Yeah. I said to Jackson, I was like, I really think that was Jason Momoa. I think that was Aquaman. And she's like, what? I go, I don't know why. I just, the vans, the ATVs, the everything, the vibe yeah. is a very Jason Momoa vibe. But we are in the desert. We're passing through the desert. Like, nothing is out there except this interstate. And, uh, and... So we, like, 30 minutes later, get to a gas station. I'm like, I'm just going to look at his Instagram because no, no celebrity goes through anything without yeah. putting it on an Insta story. Sure enough, Jason Momoa on the side of the road. He's like, my van broke down. I'm on the one, whatever it was, 10 or something. <laughs> Uh, black and white striped pants. It was him, and I couldn't believe that I recognized him from his body. I am so straight you in are. certain parts you of are. my and psyche. Did you, and didn't you love shoving that in Jack's face that you were right once again? I, I was right once again. I'm like, <laughs> I know men's bodies better than anybody. I called it. And pe and so I posted it on Instagram, and people were like, "Why would you not stop to?" Ha I'm like, "He did what? Me and stop? What's up, Jason? You need some? Uh, you want me to spit in your gas tank and get this puppy running? Like what?" <laughs> he would have been like, "Get out of here!" Oh but, my god! I mean, think of all the straight women who've just dreamed of oh. running into this guy and you in the desert. desert. Destitute. Oh, shirtless. Like that, hair up in a man bun. Gorgeous. It was last, last week. week. Yeah. I saw yours. Last week, yeah. The Vanderpump. And now I'm pregnant. <laughs> the Vanderpump girls are pregnant. Oh, Many okay. Many of them are. But, uh, did they have a pact that they were going to no, do? No, people it? say that they think it's a pregnancy pact. Remember when that happened like 15 years ago yeah. at that school in but Boston? Like high school, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they all like all just made like a pact and they're like 25, 15-year-old girls pregnant. Oh, my gosh. So people are joking that it's pregnancy pact. But Stassi, as we know, is pregnant. Uh -huh. Lala is pregnant with a girl. She has had a gender reveal. 
And then Britney, which people were so scared that Britney would be the last to be pregnant because she really wanted it the most. And mm -hmm. she is, in fact, oh. married. The other two are just engaged. Okay. She just announced she's pregnant. Oh, good. So, so everyone gets a there's baby. there's a few left. And, um, you know, I think it should be the show could be called, like, the Vanderbump. Vanderbump. <laughs> Vanderbump. Bump. Because that's a bummer to see a bunch of pregnant waiters. and I mean, not waiters. <laughs> waitresses. Well, they can't be in the. In, they can't be doing. The restaurants aren't open anyway. That's so true. let's just see them walk around and Vanderbump. You gotta pitch that. I don't know. I listen. I, I can't. I said it, but now I'm like not 100 percent that I originated it. Okay. So, if someone's listening to it and they're driving and they're like, oh, I put that under a comment under Heather's thing. I I don't know. You. But I yeah. I come up with so many things that I'm. I'm like 90% sure I came up with that, but I'm not sure. But, but she's Van not sure. Vanderbump. Vanderbump, Vanderbump. I love. And, um, Shout out to whoever came up with that. Yes, if it's not think, Heather. If it's not me, like, just please don't file a lawsuit. And, like, uh, yeah. And so I think hopefully she's got a serious boyfriend. Kristen Doty has one. She'd okay. like to get pregnant. Katie's already married. She'd like to get pregnant. Um, Lisa, I have a show about ba uh, babies and puppies. Well, they already have the show coming out about the puppies. Oh, they do? Yeah, the Vanderpump. It's going to be a peacock. Her. I've missed her from TV. I miss her on The Housewives. Well, I think she needs to go back. Who knows? You know, when the way things are I wouldn't be surprised if she came back. Now, this is an amazing thing that I saw on TikTok. Okay. Which, by the way, I want to say I'm so sick of every other week people saying, TikTok's going away. And then I wake up and it's still there. <laughs> no, I don't fucking want to hear it. And then and then Kelly goes, No, they mean that you um you can't update the app ever again. Who cares? <laughs> I never update if my it ain't apps. broke. Yeah. Okay, so this girl, Leah, uh huh. L Lee NYC, she started looking at Teresa and Melissa's house. <laughs> and finding details about it, and the way she does it on TikTok is so hilarious, and you just have to see it, okay? People have a lot of time on their hands. Oh, my God, but her work is appreciated. Yes. Reasons I Love Teresa DJ's Home, Part 5. Oh, that's how you say her last name. Variety of flooring <laughs> and elevations throughout both floors what? of the home. Oh, my gosh. An abundance of... Whoa! Storage. Not one, but two second floor waiting rooms outside the master suite. <laughs> decorated with memorabilia from the Broadway production of Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> the master bedroom, which doubles as a basketball court. Oh. A generously sized hallway, off of which sit three cozy bedrooms including this windowless bedroom and this bedroom <laughs> Those are... sweeping views of the port kosher <laughs> that's pretty so funny. funny the basketball court i loved it <laughs> i'm like now listen it really is a weird looking house but it was always such a big house now she's trying to sell it i don't yeah. think she appreciates with this woman pointing probably this stuff not, out probably not but it I think Joe built it. Joe Judice, uh -huh. Judici, whatever. Her brother? No, the husband. Oh. But the other brother was in construction too. But I'm like, I don't know. Maybe he didn't even have his contractor's license. I mean, if he never right. became an American citizen, do you think he really <laughs> took the contracting? Probably. And not. he just got a bunch of guys and they just kind of like put, because if you watch her series of stuff, like there's so many weird things of like balconies yeah. and like things that make no sense. That they're, they're almost like they were just like, I want an opulent house, but like you're, Still in New Jersey. Right, yes. <laughs> like, we have that sometimes here where it's, like, balconies, it's like, like, looking out to nowhere. You're, like, you're not, you know, on a, a you know, a grassy knoll in France. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? You're not looking over at, like... Right. Because the, the hallway should be looking out to the driveway, not, like... I mean, they're different architectural right. designs. It's hilarious. So, Tamron, speaking of Stassi, Tamron Hall mm -hmm. interviewed Stassi. Okay. And you know that Stassi from Vanderpump. Do you know the story? No. Well, she was let go. She okay. was let go because a lot of things came out that she had said on past episodes of her podcast and whatnot that okay. were, quote unquote, problematic in today's times. Right. I'm not going to get all into it because everyone knows it. 
So she went on Tamron Hall, and then people said, well, Tamron, you, Tamron, you make, made her feel uncomfortable. So then she defended herself and said, I told her every question I was going to ask uh-huh. and everything. Anyway, my question to you is, yeah. when you've been canceled like that, like she, they fired her from Vanderpump, uh-huh. her agents dumped her, her t- PR person dumped her, her second book got shelved. Well, her uh-huh. tour was already... Um, canceled because of covid but it's right there's no they weren't renewing the dates yeah then she got pregnant so people are like just leave the pregnant girl alone but so she decided to kind of now she's starting to post again on instagram uh-huh. so she kind of decided this would be her gateway to kind of okay. stepping back but john christ uh-huh you know or christ you know who he is right no i don't, don't want, know who he I is don't want no he's a comedian Oh, okay. He's like a Christian comedian that's huge on YouTube, huge in like doing mega Christian churches, okay. everything. And I, last year. Oh, he's the one that got canceled, right? He got canceled because he, I don't know if he says he's a virgin, but he. Oh, and he was texting he a follows, bunch of girls. like being, you know, virtuous and yeah. follows the really evangelica, like strict Christian values of no right. sex before marriage or certainly only with your spouse. Yeah. And he started flirting with women that he met after shows. Right, right. And the thing that really got the Christian community crazy is that some of these women were married and he was right, continuing right. to pursue them. Yeah. He canceled. That. He had a Netflix special. Take it right, down. Right, right. He, this was before COVID, he canceled right. all his dates. He's like, I'm going away. Right. Then COVID happened. Yep. Anyway, he just came back. Oh, really? He just started doing a ton <laughs> of videos. He's killing it on TikTok. Oh, wow. No mention of it. Yeah. No, hey, I'm back. I so, think that's what people do. They So my go question away. is, what is the right? Do you just just go away for a year or six months and like dip your toe back in it and people that like you will still like you and the other people that were angry have moved on to be angry about someone else? What is your what is your advice? Honestly, I don't know cuz it's it's such an interesting world to navigate right now, you know, with the just I don't know and it seems like for these people that have been canceled, it seems like the playbook is disappear because they most all that I've seen go away from social media. Right. Stop their podcast, stop their whatever, stop their tours. I don't know what the length of time is, six months, eight months, a year. And then it seems like the playbook, again, I don't know, I'm just basing it off of what I've seen, is that they... You unapologetically come back. You poly, they you most put you up the apology, apology right, in the beginning. right at the beginning. Go away. Go away. And then they seem to And then be like a Louis C.K. You just come just, back. You they just post a video as if nothing happened. Right. Uh, but that is that your the playbook? But that's playback and you think that's the more successful playbook. Like maybe like do, I wonder if it helped that Stasi did this interview or should Stasi had just start posting you know things about shopping for baby clothes or a look or I mean something. whatever it is that you've done you should look into it he should get to the bottom of why he feels the need to pursue marrying women that's weird there's something go to a therapist you know I think you should actually do the work if you've done you know whatever Stasi said get to the bottom of right. the root Stassi of that did the work she's been put in the work yeah. and uh focus on your baby I think go f- focus on the thing and then, you know. I guess you're not really answering my question. Somebody keeps My calling question me. is, <laughs> who did it better? Beverly Hills is calling me. Hello. <laughs> who did it better? Stassi, yeah. who said I'm sorry, but then went away. Yeah. Then came back and did a big interview, which was mixed reviews. Okay. Or just say you're sorry, go away. And just come back and not address that you saw dated other women, married women. I think Gosh. maybe he did it right. Yeah, yeah. It seems like it if he's, if he's killing on tick, TikTok. And I think the, he's like TikTok's I, the true barometer. But also, I think that he <laughs> is like really funny and has a knack for making these videos. Yeah. So probably by going away and coming back on TikTok six months later because he was a big YouTube person and Instagram person. There's probably people that are like, who is this guy? There's probably tons right. of new people yeah. that are like, I found a funny guy well, that aren't going to bother to find out that a year ago he was canceled because he called a woman who was married. Well, here's the thing. I mean, or I know it was worse than that. You can write me, but I'm just the prob- remembering. The problem I has, I has the problem I ha- have 
And you got a five on that essay test? <laughs> the only write, other I had person? I write it down. I can't verbally say it. The only problem I have with someone like this yeah. is that his whole shtick is around being Christ-like, right? right? And, then and his name is Christ. And his name is Christ. So Jesus Christ is very pissed about that. Yeah. Uh, and and so if your entire career, if you're making money right. off the back of this virtue that you don't actually have, yes, I have an issue with that. I agree. So and, do I. Uh, so hopefully he did do some work. And if you then, you know, either have, in, as they say in the... Christ world repent or you know then I yeah you know come back and do your thing I mean you can't not work for the rest of your life right you know uh, because you you know were chatting up married women online uh, and I don't know the extent of his allegations so <laughs> no no but that's what it is there was not yeah. it was not rape it was not uh, maybe there was some you know unwanted I don't know if they like pers- sexual assault. Being pursued. Yeah, but our like gro- yeah. little groping, but it was not but, to the level of like. But if he goes back to the same shtick and yeah. it's still doing the thing, then eventually you're like, okay, you gotta. Get, I think get you should just here. get married and then just stay with that woman. Don't, yeah, then you're not tempted. Did you hear the show Love Fraud? Yes, I watched the first couple episodes. Oh well, then I want to ruin it for you. Oh yeah, I haven't seen the end of it. Okay, well tell me what you think. Of it. Well, so they're trying to find this guy. I mean, I'm... Your mom's been... Did your mom get married a few times? She's been married twice. Oh. <laughs> Do you think that she could have ever been a victim of, like... 100%. <laughs> it is a miracle that my mom did not end up on one of these shows where she got duped by somebody... My mom was ginger. I love I love ginger, but she's very gullible. Okay, and she's very. She wanted to find love so bad for much of my life that I think she would have done so whatever. Did you, yeah. I can't believe this guy didn't find my mom. <laughs> <laughs> because when you're watching it, and for people, it's on Showtime. It's Love Fraud. It's like four, or five parts about a real like in real time. They're trying to find this guy and. He's taking some women money and things, but really he's just going from woman to woman to woman, mm-hmm. and he's married married to several at the same time, which is a crime. And now, he steals her money. Steals her money, and but sometimes not a lot. Like sometimes it's sometimes not. Sometimes it's, it's a car out of one. Yeah, of them. small bananas. It's like you know, other people. It's more, and then but also it's just this teasing of like acting like you're there. Like let's go look for houses yeah, and like they, like like get off on like a fantasy for two weeks. Well, I can't believe the the juggling people do when they have multiple lives. You know? Yeah. I can I I mean I barely can keep up with the one situation I have to like to be juggling like he was juggling like four or five women at a time. But I think when someone, like you said, like growing up, your mom, you know, you knew that she was like looking to be in love. Yeah. And you see these women and I think they're looking for it. I think some of them have even maybe given up. And then, oh, my God, this mm-hmm. guy is so into them and he becomes a chameleon and he's yeah. exactly what they're into and what they like. He says all the right things. Yeah. It did make me seeing just how my mom acted and watching this. <laughs> like women of a certain age yeah. who are divorced, not all divorced, or right. never found love, it could be pretty easy for some dude to waltz in there, yeah, and uh, dupe them. Well, I'm, I'm people not... want love, you know, and, and I, I know, and you want it to be genuine, but sometimes people have bad intentions, you know. I always say when these guys come. And they love bomb you and they're, you know, telling you compliments about yourself that like you're, you, you always knew, but nobody said. Yeah. It's always like, I say, it's always like, finally, (laughs) somebody gets me. Like they finally get how great I am. This is the person for me. And you're not thinking like, isn't it weird that not until this age that a guy has been so like, it's not. Unfortunately, it's not women that. Oh, it's like um, Vicky's guy. Yes. What's his Brooks. name? Brooks. 
Yeah. He, yeah. And he, he knew her love tank was empty. Yes. They he, know what you need to hear. Yeah. And like, then you're like, finally, this is what I've been looking for. And then they say, you've been what I've been looking for. Right. And you're just you're like, finally, someone gets me and it's my time. But you know? ladies, you have to be careful, though, because if a dude is like week one, even week three, saying like, we're, we, I want to marry you. We got to. Buy a house in Bermuda. Red flag. I have to I have to move in or you have to move in with me because I have to see your face every morning. Yeah, no. There's something wrong. No man I mean, I'm not saying if a man wants to marry you, he's a fraud, but <laughs> oh no man's like rushing into that. No. They're taking their sweet ass time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, because they don't, you know, they're all like, do I really you know, want the only the good thing about this over here? Is all the women that have been with somebody for like, you know, many years and would like a ring, they're watching this going, oh my God, thank <laughs> God. He's still here and he's normal. Yeah, maybe he isn't asking me to marry him, but fuck, yeah. at least, it, like these shows, every guy needs to make his woman watch Love Fraud yeah. because it will make you so grateful for whatever relationship you're in see babe aren't well like that on the the one woman on there that left her husband yeah wiped out his 401k oh, yeah. started a seafood restaurant with this guy yes and th then the guy takes all the money out of the restaurant leaves she goes back to old boring bob or whatever the, his name was and he took her back and he said i don't care i want my wife back said, i and, don't care and but you know what he what he changed in his life what he started to go to karaoke with her. That's that's true. That's she true. she started to go to karaoke. She asked him once, "I want to go to karaoke." Go. She went to karaoke. She met the Scott Love Fraud guy, slept with him, left him, cleaned out his bank account, started the seafood. You know what they never? What happened to the seafood restaurant? I looked it up on Yelp. <laughs> I think did it's they did was she right now? So she lost that too. I mean, there's still pictures up. And they look pretty good. I have to tell you. And then they showed her. I would have I would have eaten there. When she talked about why she opened the seafood restaurant, she goes, "I went to to Times Square, and I went to Bubba, Bubba Gump, Gump. <laughs> and I had the smell, that smell, the butter, the butter and the fried, the fried food, the just the grabbing of the the crab. That Bubba Gump it out. was her inspiration." Oh, I needed to be a part but of this I, business. I couldn't tell if the business had been closed, like because of this yeah. or of COVID. It's hard to oh, it's hard oh, to tell. Oh. I think she probably let it go. But the, there's um, Yelp. There's pictures on the Yelp site. Is she in it? She's not in it. The oh. food, the food, and stuff. And um, but they did feature her singing. <laughs> and I, I was expecting more. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I guess I gotta go to this karaoke night. He learned. Oh my god! But uh, that, let that be a lesson, like you said. If yeah. you leave your born husband, you wipe out his bank account, and you go uh, run off with old fried I, fish over and here. And let it be a husband too. And let it be a message to the, the you know the partner and the couple that doesn't want to take interest in their partner's new thing. Yeah, karaoke. 30 years in, whether it's karaoke or whatever, like, I really want to do this. And you're like, yeah. oh, just fine. Go by yourself. Don't Go do bowling it. by yourself. Don't no, do it. get a bowling ball. Go get a bowling ball. <laughs> get a bowling ball. So, ladies, stick with your born man. Men, support your ladies <laughs> in, their boring, in their boring pursuits. <laughs> and on that note, um, Fortune... You have something very exciting happening this Saturday that the Juicy Scoopers might want to participate I mean, in. It's, Why don't you tell them? It's very exciting. Well, because my whole tour got wiped out. Uh, yes, we have heard. For this year. We heard. I'm and doing, so did Kelly Clarkson. Yeah. I'm trying to do some virtual shows. Yes. So on Saturday at 6 p.m. Pacific, uh, Chris Frangiola, who's, who's that? a Juicy Scooper oh. fan favorite, he and I are doing a virtual comedy show together. I'm spinning a wheel of fortunes jokes. Chris is going to tell best of jokes. I'm going to do stand up. Uh, we got people zooming in. I don't, Heather might be available. I she might. might I not. might. I have to figure it out. We got but, some yeah. other Chelsea lately people. Are I think Brad Colonna Kirkman. They're uh, zoom. Josh Wolf. I think okay. you're zooming in. And then Chris and I are going to, uh, you know, just have a little variety fun show. And if you can't watch it live, uh, it'll the link stays up for two days. Uh, it's only ten dollars. Yes, and uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And they, where do they go? Uh, FortuneFemster dot com. In my awesome. like tour section, it's literally the only 
uh, one. Oh, I am doing some drive-in shows uh, mid-October in Hickory, North Carolina, and Columbia, South Carolina. Those that will be on my website next week. Oh, we gotta do a virtual show together. At I'll some do point. one. Like we should do like a Christmas one or something. Okay, let's do it. Let's figure something out. Let us know, GC Scooper, if you'd be down for that. Yeah, and we don't want to will... waste our money if you're not. I don't want to waste our it. time. <laughs> it's more like our time well, and two people watching. Well, because well, um, because I don't. We're not doing this from like home. Like we're not gonna be in our closet, yeah. the bedroom. I rent. We rent a stage out. Right. Three cameras. It's a big, big quality production. All right. I'm down for. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it, everybody. So everybody, go to fortunefemster dot com. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Juicy scoop. <laughs> Wink. <laughs>